Hi, I'm Claire. I'm a key account manager at Odoo. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Palvi, the company behind the first flying car in the world. They've successfully integrated Odoo in their operations to navigate the complex challenges of developing such groundbreaking technology. In this video, we'll see how Odoo supports Palvi in their technological challenges and regulatory requirements. So let's jump in. Today, Odoo enables Palvi to address key challenges, such as a product repository of more than 10,000 products. If I deep dive in my database, you can see that in my inventory, in my products, I have now more than 12,000 products. I can also group my products by category, which is really relevant for me, and I can now see all my articles and materials, my sub-assemblies, or even my generic products. With Odoo, Palvi can create and manage complex bills of materials with hundreds of components and require operation. Here, I'm in my manufacturing app. I have an overview of all manufacturing orders that are going on, that are done, that are cancelled, that are too close. I can also have a view on my component status, which is really relevant for me. Let's deep dive in one of those manufacturing orders, for instance, this one. We can see here that I need 161 components. And for each of them, I have the full traceability report available for me. Let's take this one, for example. I have here the lot and serial number of those components. And of course, if I click on that number, I also have the location and the full traceability report. Odoo also provides top-notch inventory management, in which traceability is key. Here in my inventory, I can have access through my reporting to my stock. I can now have a clear overview on what do I have on hand, what's free to use, what's going to come in my inventory, but also what's going to come out of my inventory. I can also have a look at my moves history and I can group by, let's say, location. Now I can have a clear overview on the different locations, which products are in which locations, locations being the structure of my warehouse. Odoo also allows Palvi to have purchases approval workflows on predefined criteria. In my purchase app, I have here the dashboard of all my purchase orders. Let's have an example. Here I can see that because of the amount and because of the vendor, I have an approval workflow. As you can see in the chatter, Yehun has to approve the purchase order, which he did. Now I can see here in the tab approval flow that it has been well approved and I can go on and confirm my purchase order. So this was an overview on how Palvi uses Odoo today. But what lies ahead of them? Odoo will support Palvi in their commercial launch as well as their growth and international expansion by providing them a scalable and evolutive tool. So how to build a flying car with Odoo? Well, I think Claire already explained most of it in the video. Um, it's not really the question how to build a flying car, but it's more the question why would you buy or build a flying car? It's not really the first time in history that you're really doing it. But the reason why we started with a building a flying car is that mobility is changing. From back in the days, people have been dreaming of going the extra mile. And what you will see in the next 10 years is that in the next 10 years, immobility more will change than it did in the last 50. And what did change in mobility? Cars are still running on four wheels, running with new technology inside it, but in essence, it's still a car, a chassis and four wheels. In aviation, it's the same. You got Airplanes, which are a tube with two wings, but it didn't develop much more. In essence, it's still the same airplane. And then you got the dreamers. The dreamers who are going for the extra mile, going for the flying car. So in the top, you see a couple of flying car concepts. We always say we're the first flying car in the world, but that's not true. Here you can see a couple of inventions from the last century. So you even have a flying car which landed a couple of times in the garden of the White House in the US. You got the dreamers with the airplanes. We are not the first one to build a flying car. But why would we buy or build a flying car today? 
the need for mobility is growing. I don't know how many of you were driving here this morning, passing Antwerp, passing Brussels, getting stuck in traffic. Um, I had the same problem, and at that moment I was thinking, why do I have a flying car in the back and now driving into the traffic jam? But the mobility is growing, the streets are getting full, so we're going the extra mile. You can go two directions. You can go below ground and you can go above ground. The direction we are choosing is going above ground, flying over, creating a new infrastructure in the air where we currently don't have it. So we are shortening commutes. People from remote areas can reach the city much faster. They don't need to drive over mountain ranges, over the bridge, which is a couple of kilometers away. They can just skip it by flying over it. And what we are doing, we change everyday mobility by offering air mobility solutions for generations to come. So what you see just standing outside is presentation area. It's an orange flying car. It's the Pell V Liberty. And the Pell V Liberty you also see in the future. Here it's driving around. But we have much more to come. So for the growth in the next century, we need a strong partner. So you got a couple of segments because flying car itself is already a big term. Everybody is using it. The car we have standing in front of this presentation room, it's a Liberty. You can have it as an ownership model. So you can drive from your own house, fly to where you want to go, and from there you drive it on to your business appointment, to your hotel. Then you got the second segment. This is the segment you don't see in our company today, but you will see in the future. But this is the segment you see a lot of times in the news. It's the drone-like segment, needing new infrastructure, creating platforms to land. And for example, you can fly from Brussels to Antwerp, um, but you can't pick the route yourself. You're buying a ticket, you step in the vehicle as it's a public transportation, some kind of a bus or a tram. So why would you go into this market? It seems like the dream is it can be a niche market, but is it really as big as you would expect? Yes, it is. So this is a report of Morgan Stanley. And if you see that clearly, on top it says that the flying car market in 2040 will be estimated worth about 2.7 trillion US dollars. So that is 2,700 billion US dollars yearly going around in the market. And it's not just for us, I wish. But it's going in the whole market in infrastructure and it's also going into the suppliers. Um, it's going into the systems we're using. And if you look into the vehicles, just the bottom two points are necessary. The one on the left is the market we're in right now. So it has around 100 billion a year available. And the other segment is bigger with the drones. It's about 300 billion, but it will emerge larger, later and it has way more players. But as I said, it will all start with the Liberty. So this vehicle we created is not just a flying car. It's a flying car which we can use today. So from all the examples you've seen before, there were flying cars made for the future. So people dreaming of having a flying car in the future. We hope that we have the technology, the techniques, and the tools available in the future to build a flying car. What we did was build one for today. So today, you can step in your own flying car and you drive it like any other car to your nearest airport. You can drive up to 100 miles an hour, 160 kilometers an hour, and fits two persons. While you're arriving, you simply step in and do a small conversion. Just takes five minutes from drive into flight mode. And then, only the sky is the limit. So from Brussels, for example, you're flying to London, Paris, or Frankfurt. And if you arrive in London, you find a small landing spot, place it on the ground, convert it back, and bring your car into the city center. It is as easy as that. It is possible today. So if you are developing something like this, there are a lot of people who say it's not possible. Um, it's a too big of a challenge. We don't think it's, uh, it's viable, but we do think it. So 
what we were looking for in the moment we are today is a product which can work with us, an ERP system which is ready for production of these types of vehicles. In the beginning, it is a limited run. You do a couple of 10 vehicles um, a year. But in the coming five to 10 years, you will go to the 100 species. So what you will encounter is that on one side, you got automotive regulations, on one side, aviation regulations. And we are going from a startup to a scale up. So you're battling multiple battles. And what you do need is a stable system, which you can use um, for the future. So while we have everything in place, we got automotive regulations already approved. And next year, we're finalizing aviation regulations. So that means today we need to create a system for production to be ready. So our business needs for our viable ERP systems are very clear. It's a highly regulated industry. As Claire said in the video in the beginning, traceability, compliance, and configuration management are key. If we don't do that, it is not allowed to sell an aircraft. So it was one of the things we were looking into a system. Also being prepared for future demand, a system which can grow with us, which can fit like a nice jacket, and it's not a one-of-a-kind system or a one-size-fits-all. We needed to have a system where we could take the standard things and also have it tailored-made where we want it. So for us, for global sales expansion, and for the flight academies on other continents, this was ideal because it's a system which is working perfectly with multi-company. And it's very flexible. So in the end, why did we end up with Odoo and why did we end up here today? For us, it's a strategic fit. So it's open, modular, and it's very flexible. So it grow, can grow with us in every stage of the development, going from startup to scale up to essentially um, multi-continent company. The functionality, what we did is we defined user stories and I will come back to that later in the presentation. So for some knockout material, criteria, so we can also look into the system and say we do need this and we do not need this and therefore it feels like it's a system made for us. So another thing which is for the traceability, very important is that you have the roles and rights in place, the reporting, and in the end, we have a multi-company product. Also, what was said today multiple times is the total cost of ownership. If you compare it with other ERP systems, Odoo is the best for your buck. And the implementation, this is what really surprised me because we talked with multiple companies, we bought with multiple parties. We did the implementation for Odoo in just under three and a half months. So in the last month, we went live on the 1st of October. We did the full implementation in just 100 days. So that's just over three months. In 100 days, we have a brand new ERP system, which is almost fit to us like it is made for us. We have clearly defined the user stories. We, today we implemented 86 from the 112. Instead of going live with one company on the 1st of October, we went li live with all nine of them. Um, eight private develops, developments made for us. Over a thousand purchase orders, sales orders, and manufacturing orders were transferred from one system into the other. And now we have a catalog of almost 15,000 unique products. The implementation, it was great because we had the user stories defined. That was really the key of making it a success and also making it in the sprint of this time. The communication, the single point of contact, we had contact with Marine and our single point of contact and Marine could handle it themselves. It was really like they just have a call and then it was it was made and it was not really a whole process of sending an email there, giving a call there, waiting. It felt like it was directly customer service. And we stayed updated in the, in the steering committees with the whole team from both sides. 
We did the staging, so a very clear staging before, a return of investment phase. We defined what we needed in stage one, in stage two, and in stage three. And by having a clear definition of how it looked, we also had a clear planning. And it was great for our management team to see when can we expect which functionality and when can we go live with which department. In the end, we have most already done in phase one. And then in the end, what sets us apart? Because we are a special company with another product, but we're not that special in the ERP system. What we found very fitting is that we have user training offered on multiple levels. We had it in private, so classroom sessions. Uh, we had the playgrounds. We had it in syllabuses. And we had the online videos. So on four different types of training, we could offer our employees to take the training. So some were going diving into the, into the playground while others wanted to see the, um, the scripted or the videos first before getting in. So it was very dynamic and also our point of context could support everybody in their own way. So that also gave a big support inside the company. So it was clearly defined user stories what would set us apart. So intensive contact between us and Odoo also made it possible that it made it in within the time frame. And then in the end, what could have gone better? Um, it was not much. I needed to list something. <laughs> uh, we had a very fast pace. Also in our team, it went very quick. Um, it was a very clear implementation. But if I need to say something, we needed to clean the data way longer than we did. We were transferring from another system, which exported the data in a very unclear way. We had a whole spreadsheet with all different levels, lines, and it was just unclear to bring it into the Odoo system. So our minor mistake was not to reserve more time for the migration of the data. So we should have allocated more time, but luckily, once it was in the system, it all worked. So for the key takeaways, I was talking about the user stories. So I have it clearly defined. And I brought one example what we did. So the first week, we asked our employees, bring a user story. What do you want to have in the system? And then someone said, I want to have it multi-company, which is fine if you can say it like that. But if we are bringing that quote to someone else and say, we want multi-company, he doesn't know what we want. So it's clear to say, as a purchaser, I want to purchase orders and sales orders to be synchronized between PELV companies, including the data. So we had clear user cases on our um, employees. So they said, I want to have this. And as the finance and administrator, I want to have this because I wanted to have this. And by doing this, our single point of contract could almost do the whole implementation by himself. And only in very rare cases, he needed to contact the employee who made the use case. So it was a very efficient way of working. And also the communication. Inside the company, we had a clear communication with our shareholders, our sponsor, the management team. Everybody was going to take part in using Odoo, also taking part in the implementation and the employees who made the user stories. Everybody was up to date about the progress which we were making. So for us, that also sets us apart. And together with Odoo, we're building the future together. We see Odoo as a long-term strategic partner, not just for today, not just for the first production run. Essentially, the moment we have uh, other production facilities, as it is in Asia, as it is in Northern America, Odoo will be growing with us. So, Pelvi is growing in the Odoo system as well. And together we are ready for takeoff. Thank you all.
Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you for this presentation. Uh, if anyone has a question, there is the pad just uh, below here. Um, I have some questions uh, for you. And, yeah, uh, one of my questions is like, uh, you said that you were using uh, another ERP before. It's a bit uh, too early maybe, but what's the main difference you see now that you're using or do the main benefits or advantage you can see? It is more dynamic between the departments. Um, so also going from finance into purchasing and then having the same data available for your manufacturing uh, employees, that's perfect. Okay. So having the overview of the multiple departments in just one system instead of needing to extract the data from other systems. Okay, because you're using Odoo for all the inventory, but you're also using for all the financial aspect, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, okay. indeed. So it's basically the ERP system um, with all the manufacturing things uh, attached. So inventory, uh, finance, also sales orders, everything what what we can use from the manufacturing side. Interesting. I'm just going to write the pad just to see if some people have question. Paul V. All right. Uh, I can see that there is no question. Is anyone have question? Ah, here I have. Thank you. So, how much is a car? <laughs> Simple as it. That's always the first question. Um, so in Europe, we will be starting on about 300,000 euros, which is excluding the options, and we have a limited run of 90 pieces where everything is included. That one sets you back about half a million euros. And the first deliveries are estimated to be end of next year. So it's just 13, 14 months away before we can hand over the first keys. Okay, so how many sales order have you sold already? So, did you so worldwide number, I don't know specifically. Um, in the Netherlands alone, we are now over 70 orders. Um, and we have been selling in about 17 different countries. So you can say Netherlands, Germany, UK are big markets for us, the US. We got clients in Canada, Australia, uh, China. That's a lot, huh? It's a lot, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot to cover. I also have a question about the data migration problems. Yeah. You mentioned some problems with the data migration. Can you be a bit more specific? Or um, So the data migration from the financials was harder to split. So there were the different companies um, and the, the data which came out of the system didn't really fit directly into the Odoo system. So the chart of accounts needed to be restructured, if I, if I have to say. Um, fortunately, we found an Odoo strategic partner um, close to our house who helped us out. Um, that helped us a lot uh, on migrating it. I did the migration of the, the sales orders and I did it all by hand because every contract which we have with a client was all custom made back in the days. So with Odoo, we now have a standard system of sending out a contract. This is the price, this is the contract. And we have a very standard way of sending it. But back in the days, for example, when you have different versions from 2017, 18, 19, 20, um, I, I'm afraid that personally. Okay, nice. I also have a question about legality. Will it be legal to fly with this type of car? It in is. The air? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so on the road, it is like a normal car. And in the air, it is like a normal gyroplane. So you're flying just like any other aircraft helicopter. So you're fitting within the regulations which already exists for over 100 years. So if you see a small aircraft in the air, we are flying in the same area. <laughs> because I understand that there will be some route designed by your company or it's something uh, from the government who decide the route uh, in the air? Um, so the routes are already existing. Oh, okay. We are not using them anymore. So if you fly between 300 meters high and 1,200 meters high, that's almost free airspace. Only if you're flying, for example, over Brussels Airport, it is not directly allowed, but you can ask for it. Um, if you're flying in that airspace, it is free. So you can fly whenever route you want to fly. But if you're flying in a very busy area, for example, near a small airport, you fly the circuit, which is a dedicated route. And when you have a big event like the Olympic Games or the World Championship, you fly in routes the same as the helicopters do. 
so okay, you're following nice. uh, everybody else. Super interesting. We have a lot of questions, but uh, we will have a bit uh, short of time. Uh, what I propose to everyone, there is a boot uh, explaining a bit uh, yep. what you're doing, and uh, I invite uh, everyone to have a look. And I wish you a good day, everyone. Thank you.